American history begins before humans existed. We started the Cenozoic era some 66 million years ago. America was a much different place back then, as part of the southeast like Florida was still underwater. The beginning of the Cenozoic was the establishment of the Age of Mammals. The small mouse-like insectivores that endured the late Cretaceous extinction began expanding into the mammals that ruled the modern world's land-dwelling bio-networks. This is where the first primitive horses began appearing some 47 million years ago. Among the initial was the Eohippus, a small animal with four toes on the front feet and three on the back. The largest mammals of North America were the rhinoceros-like Brontotherium of South Dakota, which could be up to eight feet tall at the shoulder. In the face of their initial success, by the end of the epoch the whole group died out. About 23 million years ago, temperatures began to wane, and with it, warm weather plant life was forced southward on the continent. Mastodons arrived in North America through the Miocene, or 4.7 million years ago, as well. By the time the Pliocene ended 2.5 million years ago, more contemporary carnivores like wolves and felines appeared. Prominent among the second group were the saber-toothed cats. Woolly mammoths became abundant throughout the future United States during the late Cenozoic. Then, around 12,000 years ago, the Earth's temperatures dropped and large volumes of water were held frozen as part of glaciers. This triggered a fall in sea level, which uncovered a land bridge sandwiched between Asia and Alaska. Humans traversed over this bridge and started becoming plentiful in North America around this time. In despite of enduring the unstable climate and connected to the advance and retreat of glaciers, around 10,000 years ago, nearby 32 species of large mammals abruptly went extinct. Horses were locally eliminated during these megafauna extinctions. Some paleontologists and historians attribute these extinctions to the influx of early humans who overhunted the indigenous large game. Under this theory, the departure of saber-toothed cats and other large predators would be explained by the loss of their prime source of food. But the jury's still out on that one. This time is important to study, as it gives historians the first glimpse at how early humans began to shape the world around them. Before this period in North America, the natural landmarks and the wildlife dictated the ebb and flow of life itself. With the emergence of mankind, the continent had a new factor in the decision-making process. Humans would eat a food source like the mammoths, and that would affect the outcome of the entire ecosystem. It is safe to say that this had an effect directly on the saber-toothed cat populations. Humans and Americans alike would continue to have a bearing on the world they live in, as I will eventually allude to.